Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy New Year. Oh, so nice to hear all of us respond on this first day of the New Year. It's really amazing to have Sunday as the first day of the year. And I'm thankful that many of us, all of us here, have made this a priority that the first thing we do, other than breakfast and getting out of bed on the first day of the New Year, is to worship God together and to celebrate the Lord's Supper, which we will do together in a few moments. Now, what an amazing way to begin our year. That was for dramatic effect. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> but it appears, actually, friends, that this is likely going to be a challenging year ahead. How many of you know that, you know, we've heard so many reports as we reflect over uh, the, coming to the end of 2022 that 2023 is likely going to be a challenging year ahead. In fact, the only good news that I've heard as we were coming to the end of 2022, not the GST USA vouchers, but the only good news I heard was that because Chinese New Year in 2023 is going to be very early, McDonald's has launched the Prosperity Burger and a curly fries earlier. How many of you know that? Okay, right. Some of you, um, you, you know, and, and they've launched it on the 29th of December. I think this is the earliest we've ever had the Prosperity Burger uh, in December. Unfortunately, also one of the New Year resolutions that my wife and I made for 2023 is that we would rarely consume McDonald's in 2023. <laughs> wait, wait, you got to hear how we define rarely, la. Well, it could be once a week Or well, actually we agreed once a month My wife says she's going to shout out once in three months But anyway, speaking of resolutions I recently chanced upon some resolutions Made by this gentleman by the name of Jonathan Edwards Now Jonathan Edwards was a 18th century revivalist And he was born in the same year as John Wesley And you know, Jonathan Edwards is to America What John Wesley's ministry was for England. Now, Jonathan Edwards, when he was 17 years old, he had written down 21 resolutions by which he would live his life. And throughout his life, he would add to this list of resolutions until by the time of his death, he had 70 resolutions that he had made. Now, I'm going to read the first, his first resolution that he wrote when he was 17 for you this morning. This is what he put in his resolutions. The first is this. He resolved that I will do whatsoever I think to be most to God's glory and my own good profit and pleasure in the whole of my duration without any consideration of the time, whether now or never so many myriads of ages hence. Resolve to do whatever I think to be my duty and most for the good and advantage of humankind in general. Resolve to do this, whatever difficulties I meet with, how many and how great soever. Now, it is quite a long resolution, but it really can be summarized in those first few words, that he resolved to do whatever he believed that would be for God's glory, that he would do whatever that would be for God's glory. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says this, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And if nothing else, that verse should tell us not to consume too much McDonald's in 2023. <laughs> but in some way, as we come together, for Vision Sunday. It is to commit in some manner to a resolution or a set of you know, decisions and commitments that we make together as a church for 2023. Who do we want to be or who do we want to become as a church in this year? Now, our vision remains the same, nourish to flourish, building up and reaching out to every generation. And this is a vision that we adopted two years ago. And last year, we added the line to every generation. 
And we base our vision from Psalm 1, which is our scripture reading for today, and I'll read it for us. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last year when I preached from this text, I suggested that The psalmist gives to us an image of a tree planted by streams of water. And this water is life-giving and he allows the tree to bear fruit in season. This is an image of plenty, of abundance, of bountifulness. I also said that Psalm 1 and 2 play an important role in the book of Psalms. They serve as an introduction and it's placed right at the beginning of the Psalter to intentionally show the readers that only those who are godly, those who are righteous, only such persons should enter the book of Psalms. Now Psalm 1 set it up in this way. The first three verses describe those who are godly, while the last three describe those who are wicked. And that is the contrast that the psalmist sets for us in the first psalm that as you read the Psalter know that there is a difference between those who will fear the Lord and walk in His way and those who will not and as it were those who are godly and who fear the Lord only such persons should venture into the Psalms for in there they will discover what it means to fear the Lord to revere Him and to worship Him. As I study these verses more preparing for our uh, sermon today, I discovered there is an additional way of looking at this psalm. And God revealed this to me as I was studying this passage. I realized that as I was looking at the first three verses of Psalm 1, that I can see three distinct areas that the psalmist is referring to. Now the first is this, and I'm going to show this to you on the screen. The first is this, the psalmist speaks about the person's spiritual community in the first verse. In the second verse, he speaks about the person's spiritual life. And in the final, about the person's spiritual purpose or mission. And as I thought about that, these must be some of the most important aspects of a godly person. I think they describe three areas that a disciple of God must examine on his or her journey to spiritual maturity. One's spiritual community, spiritual life, and spiritual mission are the three aspects, important aspects of a disciple's journey towards maturity. And in the New Testament, we also see the Apostle Paul speaking about one's journey to spiritual maturity. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul writes, Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the outward call of God in Christ Jesus. Friends, what is the it, the this, the goal? which Paul is working towards. It is spiritual maturity. And for Paul, the definition of spiritual maturity is this. In verse 10, he says that I may know God and the power of His resurrection and may share in Christ's suffering, becoming like Him in His death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Now, we don't have time to examine this fully, We had just done a sermon series on the book of Philippians, if you remember last year. But if you look at Philippians chapter 3, Paul, I realize, addresses the same three things that the psalmist does in Psalm 1. In Philippians 3 verse 2, 
Paul talks about a person's spiritual community and he does it in the same way the psalmist does in Psalm 1, telling the disciple who to look out for. And Paul says, look out for the dogs, the evildoers, those who mutilate the flesh. He is talking about the godly person's spiritual community. In verse 8, he talks about the person's spiritual life, to know Christ Jesus, his Lord. And in verse 14, he talks about the upward call of God. You know, here as we look at the upward call of God, we sometimes think that this upward call Paul is referring to is how we can get up there to heaven. Now, some of us think that that is our life purpose and that is the only reason why you show up every Sunday morning so that we may one day get up there. Now, that's not a bad thing. But certainly that is not what Paul means because in later verses, he speaks of Jesus not just being up there, but of Jesus coming from heaven to earth in the day of judgment to transform the world and change us so that we can be like Him. You see, what Paul means by the upward call is not to go up there, but for us to live in God's kingdom here in our resurrected life. And with this, he says, I will press on. I will press on towards this resurrection to spiritual maturity, living a godly life with a godly mission in a godly community. That is what he is pressing on towards. As we think about that for ourselves, how can we express this journey towards spiritual maturity as HVMC as we come to 2023? Our vision, nourished to flourish, building up and reaching out to every generation. Let me unpack that for us this morning and if you have a notebook with you how many of you come every Sunday with a notebook praise the Lord for you brother and sister and a young sister there with a notebook um, how many of you have your phones with you okay la, most people have your phones now would you take out your phones and open a new page because I'm going to tell you some very important dates that I need you to write down can we do that all right, so take out your phones. Hey, hey, don't go to your email. Don't go to your WhatsApp. I know there are hundreds of people who have texted you Happy New Year and you haven't replied to them. Don't go there. Let's just, let's just focus. Open up in your phones to a new notebook, a new note page or something that you can take notes because we're going to tell you some very important dates that we're going to do and work together as we grow towards spiritual maturity. Now, the first thing we want to do is to press on to grow our spiritual maturity community. Press on to grow our spiritual community. Come, can you turn to somebody next to you and say to them, you are my spiritual community. You are my spiritual community. I'm saying that to all of you this morning. Psalm 1 verse 1 says this, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Now put this in another way, it is exactly what my mother told me in primary one. Don't hang out with the bad kids. How many of you told your kids that when they went to primary one? My mom told me, don't hang out with the bad kids because then you will become bad, right? I told her that no, I am the influencer. If I hang out with bad kids, they will all become good. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not sure how that turned out. But you know, that is what the psalmist is saying. Don't hang out with the bad kids. Don't listen to the counsel of the wicked. What he's trying to say is hang out with those who fear God. Be with those who are godly. Be with those who will give you godly counsel, who will not walk in the way of sinners, who will not scoff at God. And the writer of Hebrews puts this same thought, but in a positive way. He says, Exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, for we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. Exhort one another so that we will not be hardened 
by sin. This means that as we press on towards spiritual maturity, we need to hold fast to one another, to exhort one another so that we may remain faithful to the end. The reason we come together each week, that we gather together in fellowship, is to exhort one another, to help one another know what it means to walk in the way of the Lord and be faithful to the very end. And that's why one of the principal ways for us to grow our spiritual community is to continue our work of reclaiming life groups. We want to make life groups a priority of our church. Now, if you're not in a life group, we want to ask you to be part of one. If your life group has grown large, we want to ask you to multiply your life group. If you find that your life group has, you know, perhaps not been meeting, we want to ask you to re-energize your life group so that you will meet regularly because we believe that life groups is the primary way for us to grow in our spiritual community. And last year, we had a wonderful life groups convention together. We gathered all our life group leaders um, to talk about what it means to be life groups in HBMC. And this year, we want to open the convention to every member of a life group or every prospective member of a life group. And our life group convention, first date to write down, will be held on the 1st of May, 2023. And I know for a fact that it is a public holiday. So you can make it on the 1st of May. Reverend Dr. Kao Shiming, who is the PIC of Haleba Methodist Church, will be our speaker. And he'll be addressing how we can multiply our life groups as a way of growing spiritual community. So, 1st of May, that's the first date that you got to put down. We want everyone to be in a life group. Therefore, we want all of you to be part of this convention because we're going to talk about what it means to multiply and to grow spiritual community community. Another way that we want to press on to grow spiritual community is of course by revitalizing our youth. If you're a youth here, could you just make some noise? <laughs> awesome, <laughs> right. That was great. Come on, why don't we give our youth, our young people a big round of applause. Come on, encourage them. We want to revitalize our youth who will sit in the front. Yeah, okay. Now, you know, Psalm 145 says this, One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. We want to commend our faith to our future generations. And you know, friends, we had such an amazing youth camp last year. It was absolutely amazing. I'm sure you ask any of our youths who attended the camp, they will tell you what an amazing time of encounter with God they had, especially when they were bowling. It was a really spiritual moment as each of them believed in faith, prayed really hard as the ball was heading to the gutter that it would turn around. I have never seen faith lived out in this way. Amazing time. We, but you know, what was even more amazing was the relationships that we've been able to build and revitalize. You know, friends, if you're a parent of a young person, I want to tell you this. It is so important for our young people to build strong spiritual communities with their peers. It is so important, absolutely essential. This is precisely what the author of Hebrews was pointing out, that we need to have strong spiritual relationships with one another if we are to stay faithful until the day of the Lord. Now, that's why, parents, we are telling you now, the camp date for 2023, 14 to 17 December, do not be away on holiday. Can or not? Can you turn to somebody next to you and say, don't be away on holiday, 14, 17 December. Plan to be in Singapore, 14, 17 of December, especially if you're a parent of a young person. It is important for you to make this a priority if you want your children to grow up with a strong spiritual community. But additionally, listen, we're not done here. We want to ask all parents of youth for a big favor. Listen, if you're a parent of youth, we want to ask you for a big favor. Across 2023, 
we will be moving our youth services to Saturdays. Now, this is really important. We're going to start from the 14th of January, 1st and 3rd, you know, Saturdays before the 1st and 3rd Sundays. But I want to explain this to all of us. Parents, maybe some of you may not appreciate this or you think, oh man, you know, my children have tuition with all kinds of things. I want to tell you this. On Sundays, we just don't have enough time to allow our youths to spend time with one another and to grow in their relationships. Listen, your children go to school easily eight hours every day eight hours we can't even get them for two hours on a sunday how are we supposed to build strong bonds with a spiritual community how are they supposed to hang firm to the confidence that we have in christ to the day of his return so please parents if your children have tuition on saturday afternoons would you cancel it or reschedule it Okay, no applause. It's okay. I thought all the kids were like, yeah! You know, but. Now, if you have CCAs on Saturday afternoons, change CCA. Now, listen, because we are not just talking about their future careers, we're not just talking about the next 10, 20, 30 years, we are talking about eternity here. That's what's at stake. That's what the author of Hebrews is saying, to hold fast to the confidence that we have in Christ. We exhort one another till the day Christ returns. And we need to help our young people have the best possible spiritual environment for them to grow up into maturity in Christ. Okay, so we got that. We expect all our young persons to not have tuition on Saturday afternoons. Okay, never mind. I'm sure we'll get a lot of emails about this later. But speaking about camps, we also do have a church camp planned for 2023. So, you know, uh, our church camp chairperson, Chu Ping, has come to tell us to save the date. I want to remind us again that our church camp will be from the 27th to the 30th of May, the first week of the school holidays. And Pastor Amos Tan from Victory Family Center will be our speaker, and he will be speaking on the theme of being a people of influence a people of influence not just here in our church context or in our families but in our workplaces wherever god places us we want to be a people of influence so we'll see you there 27th to 30th of may and i'm sure more details will be coming up shortly so we want to press on to grow our spiritual community secondly we want to press on to grow our spiritual lives come on will you turn to next somebody next to you and say i want to grow in my spiritual life I want to grow in my spiritual life. Now, the psalmist suggests that one way, one way that you will find happiness is in the law of the Lord. And that means that we will spend time with the Lord daily. If you're not already doing so, I want to encourage you to choose any Bible reading plan, grab somebody with you, and read Scripture together. Now, listen. Whatever plan you choose, remember the key is spending time with the Lord. Not chasing after the goal of reading the Bible in a year or memorizing the Psalms. The most important thing to do is to spend time in the Word of God daily. In a way, whichever way that appeals to your personality the best. Now, another way of course for us to press on to grow our spiritual lives is to rebuild our worship lives here at HVMC. We want to rebuild our worship rhythms and our lives, a worship life at HVMC. And can I just ask all of you, don't you think we have such an amazing worship team? Don't you think our worship team has really grown, you know, tremendously through this year? Why don't we encourage them, you know? They are, they are all in matching t-shirts today. <laughs> so, you know, they have grown in tremendous way and and they do that because they want to help us to worship the Lord each Sunday you know they have worked hard earlier in the pandemic to record worship videos do you know they come every Saturday here to rehearse to prepare themselves so that they can serve us on a Sunday and so we want to continue to grow our worship team so that you know we, we can be a community, a church that is really worshipful. 
And so if you can play an instrument, if you can hold a tune, would you please come and join the worship team? But more importantly, we want to come every Sunday with expectant hearts. We want to come every Sunday with a heart that is ready to worship the Lord, a heart that is waiting to encounter the Lord. We want our times of worship to be filled with the Spirit. We want people to say the Lord is here. His presence is among us. I know He is because I can sense how God's people are responding to His presence. That is what we want our worship services to be. And connected to that, we will be working through four sermon series this year. Starting from next week, we'll be studying the book of Joshua together as we learn and to press on to trust God's promises. In the season of Lent, we'll be studying the Lord's Prayer as we learn how to pray, followed by the Gospel of Mark in the third quarter and ending off with the God and Family series in October where we'll continue the conversation that we started this year, last year, on sexuality, family, and other issues surrounding our home lives. But one of the most important things for us, as I said earlier, one of the most important things that I want to encourage all of us to do is to turn to God and depend on His Spirit for our church and our personal lives. You know, Jonathan Edwards, that revivalist whose resolution I read earlier, he prefaced his list of resolutions with these words. He said, Being sensible that I am unable to do anything without God's help, I do humbly entreat Him by His grace to enable me to keep these resolutions. You know, friends, this suggests to us that we are unable to do anything without God's help. We can run the best programs, we can run the best youth ministry, but without the Spirit of God working in our midst, it will come to nothing. Friends, it is most important for us to be a church that depends on the Spirit of God, to be a church that is full of His Spirit, to be a church that will lean in not to good methods, to good methodology, to good skills, to, you know, to, to come up with all kinds of different things. What is most essential for us as a church is to recognize that God's Spirit needs to move in our church. And so, in 2023, we'll be starting our, you know, resuming rather, our in-person prayer nights. But instead of just prayer, we want them to be nights of worship as well. And so those are five dates. It is the last Tuesday of the even months. Very easy to remember. Last Tuesdays of the even months except for December. Please take down these dates. If you hadn't written down anything to this point, could you at least write down these five dates? Print them and stick them on your fridge or on your mirror. These are going to be amazing nights of worship and encounter. We are not going to rush through our times of prayer. We want to spend time with God in worship. We want to encounter the Spirit of God, the presence of God at each of these meetings. Come, make this a priority so that we as a church may grow in our reliance on God and receive His empowerment for our lives. And this is not just about your lives in church, this is about your lives in your families, in your workplaces, in your careers, in your finances, in our nation. We want to be a people who will come to the Lord on our knees, experience His goodness, experience His presence, and offer our intercessions. In addition to pressing on in prayer to grow our spiritual lives, we also want to press on to grow in our study of God's Word. In 2022, we had 12 young persons, or rather 12 persons, young and old, um, I'm not so young, yeah, but 12 young and old persons complete the Disciple One uh, program. Now, this has really been life-changing for many of the participants, and I hope all of us will seek the Lord on whether you will like to be part of this class in 2023. The intake is open and so please register by emailing thomas at hvmc.sg for more information but this will change your life i promise you you will not regret taking up this course now you may sort of 
regret first few months because you have a lot of reading to do. But once you get into the rhythm, rhythm of it, it will be amazing. I promise you, be part of this. And Pastor Loretta will be leading this together with some of uh, the other leaders, uh, or facilitators, uh, or rather she will be there as one of the co-facilitators. And, and we want to study God's Word seriously as God's people. And so I encourage you uh, to sign up uh, for this, right? To study God's Word. And in Disciple 1, you will read most of the passages from Genesis to Revelation in this course. And so you will come to know the entire, as it were, guidance and leading of Scripture through this one-year uh, program. This year, we will also be launching our first Alpha Marriage Preparation course. I'm not going to ask how many of you are getting married uh, <laughs> between now uh, and next year, just in case you haven't proposed yet. Uh, but if you are getting married or if you plan to get married this year or in the first quarter of 2024, please would you join this class that we will be running in March uh, to the beginning of April. Five classes. We are running this in conjunction with Alpha Singapore and, and this will guide you and help you prepare for marriage so that you can grow your spiritual lives together as a couple. This is important. You must come as a couple. You cannot attend the pre-marriage course as a, you know, alone and say, I hope to find someone to marry within this year. That's not how it works, okay? So you need to come as a couple, but you don't need to be engaged. If you are dating and you're working towards marriage, we encourage you to be part of this class. And so write down these dates, 1st, 8th, 22nd, 29th, March, and 5th of April, if you're getting married this year or in the first quarter of 2024. We want to grow our spiritual lives together, pressing on, on this. But finally, we also want to grow in our spiritual mission by reaching out to those around us. Now, over the last year, I think it's become clear, increasingly clear to us that our primary mission field at HBMC is ACS International. You know, God has positioned us uniquely to be able to reach the students and the staff of ACS International in a way that no other church can. And for 2023, we are pressing on in this mission to reach ACS International. And we have already started by identifying three areas where you can serve as we seek to refresh our ministry to ACS International. You can serve as a befriender to befriend foreign students and staff. You can, uh, you know, take uh, join the job shadowing program to allow older students to shadow you as you, you know, as you work so that you can engage with them personally. And we are also going to be running the Alpha course after the Religious Emphasis Week around Easter. So we really need all of you to see, you know, ACS International as our mission for you. So many countries represented from among the students and the staff of ACS International. The world is at our doorstep and each of you can play a role to reach the world by reaching someone at ACS International. Imagine that. We can reach the world just at our doorstep. And so if any of those three areas resonate in your heart, would you let us know, tell us, so that we can, you know, get you on board so that we can serve this mission for you that God has placed with us at ACS International. And finally, we want to rediscover serving. Rediscover serving. And I'm ending with this, so just, just bear with me. And this is really important. As I was reflecting towards the end of the year, I couldn't help, as I said earlier, but notice that all the newspapers and every news outlet seem to be pointing out, uh, pointing to a challenging 2023. In fact, our Prime Minister just yesterday in his New Year's message, you know, said that the international outlook remains troubled with the continuing Russia-Ukraine uh, war and the US-China geopolitical tensions, not to mention the impending recessions in the US and the European Union. 
Now we've experienced this in 2022. You know, tech layoffs that we've we've seen uh, never before have you know these tech giants in the last decade retrenched, and we've seen and experienced that as 2022 came to a close. I think we can all agree and sense that the landscape in 2023 is a challenging one. In the midst of all of this, I felt the Lord, as I was reading those newspapers, lead me to the book of Malachi. And Malachi was prophesying, prophesying at a delicate time for Israel. You see, after the exiles that we, we studied in Nehemiah had returned to the land, and after the early years of religious fervor had given way to spiritual apathy, the people were once again faced with challenges, economic and security challenges. And that was a time, perhaps much like ours, where people were no longer looking to God to save them because they thought their problems did not concern God. You know, we think that God is only concerned with the domestic issues, not with the global geopolitical issues. What can God do to change the world's economies? Larger economic and geopolitical issues seem to be not relevant to God, to worship in the temple. But it's in precisely such a time that God calls Malachi to prophesy to the people of Israel. And this is what God says. He says, return to me and I will return to you. Return to me and I will return to you. He says, don't allow the things around you to distract you from what really matters. I am your God. Return to me and I will return to you. I was stunned when I read that. How God wanted His people to return in the midst of economic and security concerns. And this is how He wants His people to return to Him. This is what Malachi writes in Malachi 3 verse 8. He says, You return to me by not robbing me of my tithes and contributions. You see, Malachi was saying to the people, yes, you are facing economic hardships, but you know what? This is not the time to withhold your giving to God. And secondly, return to God by serving God instead of claiming that serving God is vanity. You see, some of us have begun to think that serving God is like a CCA, not compulsory, just do get some points. That's not what Malachi is saying. Malachi is saying, don't ever say that. Remember to serve God. Never ever say that it's in vain that we serve God. But this is what Malachi says, if you will not rob God, if you would serve God, and then would you see God's blessings? that He will bring, I'm sorry, this was the, the verse uh, that I missed out earlier, but this is what Malachi says, that if you would not rob God, if you would serve God, this is the result. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, then all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Friends, God is saying, return to me and I'll return to you. Would you continue to faithfully give of your time, of your resources, to him would you give of yourself fully to him and would you test him would he not so reward you this is exactly what the psalmist was saying that the one who remains by the streams of water will yield its fruit it will not wither and in all that he does he will prosper. Friends, as we come to the beginning of a new year, I want to challenge us to come back to the Lord. Would you return to Him? Would you return to Him? Because He will return to you. 
I've chosen for our theme for 2023 two words, press on. Let us press on in returning to the Lord. Let us press on to grow our spiritual community, to grow our spiritual lives, and to grow our spiritual mission. Would you press on to return to the Lord together? You know, in 2006, I participated in a fundraising effort for cancer called Relay for Life. Uh, basically, it was uh, a run around this 400-meter track, and my friends would pledge to support me uh, a dollar amount for every round that I would clock around that 400-meter track over a 24-hour period. 24 hours. My target was to run at least 100 laps over the 24-hour period. So 100 laps, 400 meters, that's just 40 kilometers. The run started easily. You know, I ran at a comfortable pace and the energy of the party was exciting, you know, bustling, the, the music was blaring. It felt really good to be running around the track. But one hour went to two hours, to three hours, and then the sun set and things looked harder and harder. You know, staying on the track seemed more difficult with each lap. Now, it came to 3.30 a.m. I had run more than 12 hours now. 3.30 a.m., I had almost decided to call it quits. I was at about 70 plus laps. And I thought the best thing to do is to lie down and sleep until 7 a.m. when the race ended. It seemed like that would be the best use of my time. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Now at that moment, a few friends who had come along for this relay, they were part of my team because you know, you, one, I couldn't run 24 hours non-stop. So each of us had partnered together, four of us, each anchoring six hours. And these friends decided that instead of sleeping during these last few hours, waiting for seven o'clock, instead we would run together, even though only one person slept would count because we are one team so only one person's lap would count but you know my friend said we came here to do this together so we will finish this together we ran the next three and a half hours together it didn't matter whose turn it was it didn't matter whether somebody was feeling really tired want to go to sleep we ran together and we finished the race together. Friends, I sense that this is our season, that we need to press on in our vision as we come perhaps to a challenging 2023, to press on together. As we've come together, would we finish together? And that is what Paul presses on towards towards spiritual maturity to live a godly life with a godly mission in a godly community would you join me to press on together that we may see God fill this church with his blessings with his abundance with his presence will his spirit overflow from us into the school that surrounds us. Will the Spirit of God come afresh as we press on that every staff and student that enters into this school will experience and encounter the Spirit of the living God. Would we be a people who will press on to study God's Word, who will press on to grow in spiritual community with one another. To exhort one another till the day that Christ returns. Would we be such a church that will finish 